Any cook can govern. Section. The organization or government. We must get rid of the idea that there was anything primitive in the organization of the government of Athens. On the contrary, it was a miracle of democratic procedure which would be beyond the capacity of any modern body, politicians, or lawyers. Simply because these believe that when every man has a vote, equality is thereby established. The assembly appointed a council of 500 to be responsible for the administration of the city and the carrying out of decisions. But the council was governed by the same principle of equality. The city was divided into ten divisions, and the year was divided into ten periods. Each section of the city selected by lot fifty men to serve on the council. All the councillors of each section held office for one-tenth of the year, so that fifty people were always in charge of the administration. The order in which the group of fifty councillors from each section of the city should serve was determined by lot. Every day, the fifty who were serving chose someone to preside over them, and he was also chosen by lot. If on the day that he was presiding, the full assembly met, he presided at the assembly. The council had a secretary, and he was elected. But he was only elected for the duration of one-tenth of the year. And, no doubt to prevent bureaucracy, he was elected not from among the fifty, but from among the four hundred and fifty members of the council who were not serving at the time. When members had served on the council, they were forbidden to serve a second time. Thus every person had a chance to serve. And here we come to one of the great benefits of the system. After a number of years, practically every citizen had had an opportunity to be a member of the administration, so that the body of citizens who formed the public assembly consisted of men who were familiar with the business of government. No business could be brought before the assembly except it had been previously prepared and organized by the council. When decisions had to be taken, the carrying out of them was entrusted to the council. The council supervised all the magistrates and any work that had been given to a private citizen to do. The Greeks had very few permanent functionaries. They preferred to appoint special boards of private citizens. Each of these boards had its very own carefully defined sphere of work. The coordination of all these various spheres of work was carried out by the council. A great number of special commissions helped to carry out the executive work. For example, there were ten members of a commission to see after naval affairs and ten members of a commission to hear complaints against magistrates at the end of their term. One very interesting commission was the commission for the conduct of religious ceremonies. The Greeks were a very religious people. But most of the priests and officials of the temples were elected and were for the most part private citizens. The Greeks would not have any bunch of bishops, archbishops, popes, and other religious bureaucrats who lived by organizing religion. Some of these commissions were elected from the council, but others, again, were appointed by lot. At every turn, we see the extraordinary confidence that these people had in the ability of the ordinary person, the grocer, the candlestick maker, the carpenter, the sailor, the tailor, whatever the trade of the individual, Whatever his education, he was chosen by lot to do the work the state required. And yet, they stood no nonsense. If a private individual made propositions in the assembly, which the assembly considered frivolous or stupid, the punishment was severe. End of section.